everybody, it's Elizabeth from Ave Parfum and I want to talk today about the French brand Fleur de Pois. So stay tuned. Thanks for being here. I wanted to talk about Fleur de Pois because I feel like the brand deserves more attention than it really gets. The perfumer, she's from France and her name is Marie Clapisson. Um, in English, Marie. <laughs> um, so she's got three fragrances that are all really quite unique um, and very enjoyable too. So let's dive in. The first thing I wanna say about these fragrances is that um, they're all 100% vegan. Um, Marie is part of the, I have notes because it's a long name, the Vetiver Network International. If you want to learn more about this, about uh, Vetiver sustainability and practices for like um, soil and water management and um, sus basically sustainability, um, you can go to vetiver.org to just, you know, if you're curious about how vetiver is grown and what what some of the issues are and how people share information about um, how to you know grow it in a sustainable way that's not going to hurt the environment or the community so um, I think that's pretty awesome and she's also part of the uh, the PETA program uh, I think it's called beauty without bunnies so yeah, just overall great ethics going on. The there. first fragrance I want to talk about is called Piton Sauvage and uh, English translation, Wild Python. Pretty cool name, I think. Um, you know, I just want to start out by saying that um, to me, this is kind of a vetiver, a woody vetiver fragrance. Um, the more it wears on me, the more the vetiver kind of shines. I love vetiver. One issue with it though is it's hard for me to find a good one because first of all, um, I do like them when they're naturalistic personally, but it's just the vetiver citrus combo. To me, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like oud and rose. It's just so played out. And um, the reason I want to talk about this one is because it's just so unique. So actually, before I dive into this, let me just show you the bottle real quick. I mean, it comes with the cap, but then if you want to, so that's for dabbing, you know, but if you want to spray, you can switch to um, the spray that comes inside and then it has a clear cap on top. So you have kind of two ways to wear the fragrance. So the notes for Piton Sauvage are cardamom, incense, Labdanum, vetiver, birch, guyac wood, and Peru balsam. So I'm gonna get a little bit personal here about this fragrance because I just can't help it. What is fragrance if not, you know, evoking sentiment, memories, that kind of thing? Um, as soon as I spray this on my skin, this is the only one I put on a couple hours ago because I just wanted to let it wear down. But as soon as I put it on my skin, I immediately was taken back to, gosh, I was five or six years old. Um, there was a fire at my grandparents' house and I was in the house at the time. So it just brings back this memory, you know, the, the um, firemen came. It was pretty traumatic. But the, I guess the bottom line though, is going back to the house after the fire was put out in the days or weeks after that. Um, it had a particular scent, a really woody, a burnt wood kind of scent, like a charred wood type of scent. Not just smoky. It, I mean, it is smoky in the top, but it smells kind of, it, it, it brings me right back to that, that time and I've actually never had a perfume do that. I mean, you can find perfumes that are smoky, but this is something else. In a good way though, I mean. I know it sounds kind of weird, it's a bad memory, but it's a great scent. I'd say it has a really pleasant, 
strong smoky wood scent to it and uh, I do get a little bit of the cardamom but it's not too strong I don't think this is a spicy fragrance at all um, as it wears I get um, more of the woods and definitely the Peru balsam comes into play um, so by the time it dries down because it's been on for some time let me smell it again though what I'm really getting after about three or four hours of wear is um, a really nice balance between the uh, creaminess of the Peru balsam and it's kind of contrasting with a, an earthy vetiver. The smokiness isn't so intense now by the time it dries down. It kind of calms down. But um, the combination of the creamy, uh, sorry, the creaminess with the, um, the slight tanginess, the slight natural tanginess of the vetiver is really nicely balanced. And you know, another thing I kind of forgot to mention, I don't know how about this fragrance. Um, it really smells <laughs> there. I, I don't, I don't know how she did it. it. There's something about it that just smells um, animalic and intensely so in a way I've never smelled to the point where it actually smells kind of like snakeskin or like leather and snakeskin together. There's just a definite animalic component that for me just really makes this fragrance. I mean, it's pretty awesome if even without the animalic aspect, just the use of vetiver um, to be something that isn't something we smell all the time, I think is pretty amazing. So yeah, and I would say also for a lot of ladies, this is gonna be very masculine. Again, vetiver, I just feel like any any lady can wear a woody fragrance and, and I love those. But um, this uh, out of the three is definitely the most masculine leaning, if that matters to you. Moving on to Licorne Maudite. And again, English translation, uh, the cursed unicorn. <laughs> She's very clever, I have to say. I mean, her perfumes are clever and she has backstories to all of them that I won't go way, way into. One thing I'll say about uh, Licorne Maudite is um, it's basically about a unicorn who's kind of like frolicking along and everything's good. And all of a sudden, uh, I don't even exactly remember, Some, something happens, a monster, something like that. And the unicorn, like with a glance, is forever frozen, um, turned to stone, not frozen, but turned to stone. Um, and so it's kind of interesting because you're like, wow, what what is this fragrance going to smell like you know um how can you put that whole story into a perfume but she does it in a really clever way so um let me read the notes to you guys uh, they are blood orange nutmeg lavender elemi labdanum and amber so let's see i'm gonna give it a quick spray i have worn it before but it's been some time so i don't who knows, maybe my tastes have changed. So I just sprayed some of this on and the first thing I would say that hits me is the fruitiness. It's intensely fruity. It's really fun, whimsical, magical. Uh, it has like a, I smell the blood orange, but I've smelled blood orange in, in a lot of perfumes and a lot of times, you know, it can be kind of tangy and juicy here. It's kind of juicy, but it has more of like a really sugary, almost um, candy type of vibe. It's not candy like it's gonna make you sick because it's so sweet, but it's more of a sweet orange type of smell. I get a little bit of lavender. I wouldn't say that this is a lavender perfume though. If that's what you're looking for, I don't know, lavender, it could be stronger on you than it is on me, but 
I definitely smell it, but you're not gonna have like a boy Chanel type of thing here. Um, but yeah, the other thing that I get from this is just a little bit of the nutmeg. I don't know how she does it. She's amazing. The nutmeg, it's like it's spicy and the lavender is aromatic. And so it's hard to imagine how this mixes so well with, it's not just mixes, it brings like dimension to the fruit that keeps it from being really just, oh, blah, fruity, you know? It's interesting. So um, I did just spray this on, but from what I know from previous wears is, another thing, I don't know how she does it, as it dries down, it starts to develop a, a, an actual scent of, of like mossy stones. It just smells kind of damp and maybe a little mineral-y. Now, I love frankincense. I have several varieties of uh, frankincense that I keep in my nightstand. I go crazy with this stuff. Um, I sniff it constantly, I put it on my skin, you know, my hands, mix it in with my lotion, whatever. There are some varieties of frankincense that can do that, that give like a, like a damp rock kind of smell. Um, there's others that are, you know, um, what do you call it? More like citrusy and others that are more like pine, piney. But um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know if Elemy can ever impart that on a fragrance, but it's, it's pretty cool. So now the last fragrance we're going to talk about is called Oh Pink Flamingo. And no, it's not about a zoo. Uh, the backstory is uh, takes place in a nightclub called the Pink Flamingo. So, oh, Pink Flamingo is at the Pink Flamingo. Um, without getting into the whole backstory, I feel like you can just smell what's going on through the fragrance. So, um, I put some on already and uh, wanted to just quickly talk about the uh, top notes because it's not listed anywhere that I've seen um, orris root, but if you are a big um, fan of that, you know, uh, makeup powder cosmetics kind of scent or just the whole starchy, rooty orris scent, you'll get a punch of it here right in the beginning. And that's one reason I feel like this fragrance needs a lot more attention than it gets because it's really beautiful. I have to say, and then, um, oh, the notes, that's what I was gonna do. All right, so it's rose, cumin, coffee, olibanum, tobacco, cedar, birch, labdanum, amber, and musk. And, you know, um, I would say that after the whole makeup powder thing goes on, it's like you go deeper into the night at the Pink Flamingo. So let me see for a minute. I would say that the scent of the Oris powder, compact makeup powder, uh, starts to kind of mix in with some of the other scents. The scents that I start to get are coffee, uh, definitely some tobacco, and tobacco can kind of smell a little cinnamon on, cinnamony on me sometimes. Um, and I think that's what's causing me to get like a little bit of a spiciness that seems kind of like cinnamon, but it's just, it's smoother. So yeah, that, that could be tobacco. I'm not sure. Uh, another thing I'm getting with this now is kind of the scent of the wood. So the wood is like, uh, it smells kind of old, like it's kind of like... Have you ever, have you ever been to, I don't know, an old restaurant that, the kind of thing where, where back in the day, you know, your parents had been going there for decades or whatever, even your grandparents like it, that kind of thing. We had an old Italian restaurant like that in San Francisco called The Golden Mirror, and it had been around for a long time. And it kind of just 
reminds me of something like that. So something about the wood smell, the age of it, it just smells kind of vintagey. And the whole thing takes you to this like vintage nightclub. I find it to be just actually really wearable and uh, really, it also doesn't go too gourmand by the way. Um, because of the coffee and stuff, you'd think maybe it's it would start sweetening up. But what's cool about it is I don't think it's getting sweet on me at all. It's It just maintains its um, um, darker, woody... I mean, it's a little earthy in a way because, you know, wood and orris root. But um, I think it just conveys the whole scene of this nightclub. So last, I just wanted to say that with every purchase of a full bottle, you get um, a matching scarf. Um, I have one right here. I just want to show you. This is for O Pink Flamingo. All right, can you kind of see it there? So each fragrance has its own matching scarf. I'm pretty sure Marie would have uh, designed these herself. So there you have it, guys. Our three fragrances by Fleur du Point. And I hope you check them out. Take care until I see you again. Bye.